Hello, and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here live in Orlando, Florida. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Shelly Kramer. We are here at Click Connect 2024. James Fisher, Chief Strategy Officer. Click is here on theCUBE. James, welcome to the show. Appreciate you, you coming thank on. Thank you for having me. So a lot of strategy, a lot of data involved. The keynote today really highlights the practical nature of how Gen AI is translating into reality. Um, live demos, new products will be available within 30 days. Shipping real product. You guys have been in this data business, it's paying off. <laughs> now that Gen AI wave is here, it's like you guys were prepared as a company dealing with the data. It's almost a dream scenario uh, for Click and your customers. Um, I mean, you got to be pretty excited about what's happening right now. Yeah, absolutely. Look, you know, you've only got to look around the event here just to see the excitement, the passion, the dialogue that's happening around data analytics and, and AI. And we like to talk about you know, the fact that this is a moment that we've really been waiting for for, for 30 years. Um, you know, we made investments right at the, the heart of Click and our analytics engine to bring the power of the human with the, with the machine. Yeah. We took that big data wave, we've taken that wave to, to cloud, and, and now everything that's happening around AI and, and generative AI is just such a huge opportunity. Yeah. Um, but we've got to do it right. And I think we heard this morning about how we've got to optimize our processes, optimize our data, get that foundation right, mm -hmm. and then we can achieve great things. You said, it's interesting, you said 30 years, it's like, it's, it's like the time is now. We saw a glimpse into the future of data and generative AI on Keynote as it's just happening. And so the big trend is everything could be measured now. And so the role of data used to be in the, uh, 10 years ago during the big Hadoop, big data craze, ask good questions and maybe you'll get answers. Now, the answers product actually highlights that everything now is built in. Generative AI will have those prompts built in, the data will have intelligence, new ways to manage data is coming out of it, a whole nother set of things. You guys talk about experiences. Tell us, in your view, what is the key underpinning that's driving the Gen AI way? Because these questions or prompts are going to start to be under the covers. Yeah. They're going to be in the data itself. It, it, exactly, if we set the technology aside for a, for a moment, and you, you reference that big data wave, right? You'll, you'll remember the digital transformation wave as well, right? right. Um, well, at its heart, transformation is about change, and it's about doing something different. Uh, and unless you can get good insights that you trust, that your people yeah. trust, that you can then not just inform but compel the action, uh, then that's really where that point of value creation comes. And right. I think we've realized as, a, as an industry that we've gone through that big data wave, we've moved high volumes of data, um, but the goalposts have been shifted now. Um, you know, data quality, the variety of data that's needed, structured and unstructured, uh, it enriches the conversation. Uh, and it's now about how do we, we capture that. The technology, we can align that, we can think about pipelines of data, yeah. we can talk about you know, GPT and chat interfaces and conversational analytics. Uh, but fundamentally, we've got to move away from a yeah. science project that isn't tied to a business outcome and really think about what use case, what problem are we solving, and what tools and technologies and data we need to solve that problem. You know, to your point about the goalposts moving, I think one of the important things, and we've been of course talking about digital transformation for the last decade plus. Well, I don't know that this is really all that different, this AI revolution that's happening, um, because the thing about a digital transformation journey is that it's, you're never done. Okay, you're always iterating, you're always measuring, you're always tweaking, and I think that the same is true, I mean, um, Mike Capone said this in his keynote, you know, it's really constantly iterating, paying attention to what's happening with those goal posts, anticipating that, adapting your strategies, and so I think that's part of what makes this such an exciting space. Absolutely, and if you think about some of the challenges that have held organizations back with, with big data, with BI, um, it's actually some of the same problems. Yeah. Right? It, it's about the availability of data, it's about trusting data, it's about good data quality, it's about uh, education of your end users. Right? We've talked a lot about data literacy on theCUBE in previous, in previous uh, uh, events, in previous years. Uh, AI literacy is, is just another facet of that, of that data literacy challenge. So in many respects, we've got the same challenges, um, but a bigger opportunity, and, and now really is the time to get our act together and, uh, and, and solve this problem once and for all. Obviously you got a great tailwind with Gen of AI, everyone's talking about it, and that's a big part of the growth strategy. Share with us the strategy of Click going forward. We saw AWS um, keynoting in on stage from remote, Chris Cruz from Marketplace Partner Network, 
obviously a big partner is, is the cloud players. So you got on-premise data, you got cloud operations. What's the strategy? Take us through the vision of what Click strategy is going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Well, at its heart, it is all about helping customers work with the data wherever that data resides to solve real world problems. There's, or even the world's greatest challenges with, 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 with data. Um, that's easy to say, right? The question is, what do we need to do in order to, to enable that? As a, uh, as a company and a, a, an organization, we think we've caught all of those waves over that, that last 30 years. We've invested where we want our customers to be, where we know our customers are going to be, uh, and that's exactly what brings us to, uh, to this point. You know, we've built a platform that uh, delivers best-in-class capabilities that can be consumed independently of one another, but of course, holistically together. Uh, we overcome some of those challenges, that technical debt that goes with the modern data stack by, uh, by doing that. Uh, we're focused on engaging more users uh, in the data and analytics pipeline so they can drive more consumption and more value from the data they have. Uh, but we're focused as well on doing that in a truly open and agnostic uh, way. Uh, we have the unique advantage of being able to support that data supply chain wherever the data resides, across any cloud uh, platform, uh, and that creates a, a huge ecosystem advantage for Click. Um, the landscape is going to change. The landscape is going to change uh, around the cloud platforms that customers are using. And I think Meredith from IDC mentioned it this morning. Your AI strategy today, your LLM today, is not going to be the same as in the future. You've got yeah. to future-proof that How has Click's product changed? Because I mean, data was an ingredient of the product in the past scenario. Now data is the product. We see a lot on stage data products, data marketplaces. Data is code, data is supply chain. This is now a complete game changer as data becomes the product for Click. How would you describe the difference between how Click looks at their products if data is not just an ingredient, it's the product itself? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. You know, the, 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 I've lived in this world of data for 30, 30 years, so it's sometimes hard to see what's new and, what, and, what's, uh, and what's been around for, for a while. I think that fundamentally we're now asking ourselves the question, what problem are customers trying to solve? And therefore, with a data product, you think about the delivery of a, of a laptop, for example, right? As a consumer of a laptop, what problem are you trying to solve? What functionality do you need? In the world of data, we need to think, what data is required to solve that problem. Who's going to use that data, right? So it's, a, you know, I'm a product management person at, at heart. <laughs> so it's about applying the principles of product management to the way we think about data, the way we think about the technology. And that infuses across everything we're doing in the, in the roadmap. The, the two are inseparable now. Yeah. You know, one of the things you mentioned, the data is the product. You know, on stage we hear, without data you really can't have AI. That's clear, message, everyone kind of gets that now. Yeah, are there verticals that are more set up than others? Uh, healthcare, some regulated industries actually have great governance. Turns out they did all the heavy lifting already, so are they, are they in a good position? Which industries do you see as prime? And they're all going to be impacted by generative AI. We see the application of generative AI impacting all industries, but are there ones that you see strategically that are more important now that might be low-hanging fruit? Healthcare, for instance oil and gas, I mean, all regulated, which ones? I, th I think, quite honestly, if you'd have asked me that question five years ago, I would have probably called out a, a bunch, right? And you mentioned some of them. Pharma, uh, healthcare, uh, tech, Finance. financial services, have all been kind of pioneers around the, the use of, of, of data and applications around it. They've made big investments in um, you know, their compliance. So the compliance framework and regulatory framework they worked with wasn't driven by data, it was driven by you know, the, all of the different rules around drug development or, or you know, things that came out of the result of the, the financial events that we've seen over the last uh, few years. I think today the opportunity for any industry to get value from data is ubiquitous. Um, and the applications of it, I think, are use case driven. Um, you know, I talked to uh, folks a couple of weeks ago from a, from a large airline, equally the CEO of a large pharma company. Uh, and they're all very, very focused on what problems are they trying to solve and how do they use data to, to address it. You know, one of the things I saw, you guys had a great research study that came out, Shelly and I were talking mm -hmm. about on our, in, our intro segment. Um, investment levels in Gen AI aren't yet there. What are you seeing in the marketplace? Uh, I know, Shelly, you have some stats there. Obviously, the, we see the low-hanging fruit in certain applications, but still the investment in Gen AI is not yet there levels we're seeing. 
Are you seeing the same thing? What are some of the things you guys have found in the marketplace? Yeah, I, I think there's a the, the big stat we talked about this morning was around the, the volume of unstructured data and mm -hmm. the, the opportunity that we uh, think organizations have to, to create more value from that. It, it creates a, uh, it, it takes up a large volume of the data that they have, mm -hmm. but we're not yet getting the, the, uh, the true value from it. Um, I think that what's interesting is the investment in data and analytics technologies, whether you look at IDC data, Gartner data, or any of the other commentators that are out there, um, investments in data and analytics have been a priority for CIOs uh, and CDOs for, for a number of times. Uh, the pandemic, the financial crisis, um, is really just an opportunity to calibrate around data. You make the investments then, you're able to accelerate uh, into a growth phase much more quickly uh, as economic or environmental conditions, uh, conditions change. So I think the investment levels have, have been there. Uh, I think we're now moving beyond science projects to discrete <laughs> use cases. Uh, and I, that is frankly creating a rising tide yeah. for all investments across uh, data and analytics as you kind of see here today. You know, I think that though there's so much to get your arms around, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but when we talk about data and the data that's needed for Gen AI models, you've got customer data, you've got your internal proprietary data, you've got open source public data, you've got licensed data from third party providers, and, and Meredith Whalen from IDC, uh, you know, part of what she touched on was, you know, your ability to navigate through this um, is based on your road mapping capabilities and how, how you devote your time and energy to that. And also, you know, one of the things that, that I say often as it relates to digital transformation is that you know, there was a time when strategists used to be able to develop a, a year-long strategy or a five-year strategy or whatever, we're not doing that now. I think we're developing strategies today that we have to reevaluate in six months or in 18 months or whatever. Is that kind of what you're seeing as well on the strategy front? Well, I'm, so I'm responsible for click strategy yeah. and developing the, the, <laughs> the plan that we have in yeah. place. So I absolutely recognize the, yeah. uh, the, the challenges that are that are there. Look, it's it's all about getting the right inputs, as as you as you say. Um, you know, there's a there's a, a a whole thesis around this idea of of, of diversity, right? Uh, and we think about the value that the diversity brings in our in our personal lives, in our family, in our education systems. Um, if you apply diversity to the notion of data, diversity is a good thing. You yeah. get new points of view, new experiences, new learning opportunities. That's the value of diversity in our lives and uh, that's the value of diversity in data. So the more you can consume those wide variety of sources, bring them together, ask questions across that broad race, yeah. then I think the better quality insight you're going to get and the more confidence you can have in not just that near-term view, but that longer-term uh, set of assumptions as you, well. You know, James, you bring up a, a point that we were just talking about in the last segment before you came on, we were talking about the power of analytics in sports. We had two Martins on, Martin from Click and Martin from, who's managing the hockey team, uh, one of your customers. And the thing that jumped out was situational awareness, executing the individual. You bring up performance strategy that you're involved in. As Click looks beyond the data scientist and the CDO um, and the CISO, it's basically every application is going to have generative AI in it. So at the end of the day, as you guys see your TAM expanding beyond just data analytics, you are in the data business now. And so I'm sure the TAM is going to be expanded. So two questions, what's that TAM look like uh, for you guys? And two, how are you guys using data for your own performance? Because productivity, you guys mentioned on stage, will be massive. How are you guys doing, and how are your customers starting to instrument their businesses to get that kind of performance edge, whether it's personnel makeup or strategy, instrumentation? Yeah. Take us through the TAM and then how you guys are using the data, how you see that evolving. Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at all of the different segments in which we operate, from data integration, data management, catalog governance, data science, analytics, embedded analytics and automation, that's roughly a $67 billion TAM that's growing at about 16% CAGR uh, over the next, next five years. What's really interesting is you see all these reports around investments in discrete gen AI technologies, that's great. 
Um, but the wave of investment in JAI has lifted the investment in data and analytics. So yeah. that TAM, that growth rate, uh, has increased by 24% actually over the last 18 months. Uh, so there's a huge opportunity for uh, us to deliver solutions that create value for, for, uh, uh, for, for, for customers in terms of uh, that market opportunity that, uh, that is out there. So you see that growth on that growth rate changing as a precursor to the app side growing, because you got to get your data plumbing and, and <laughs> foundation <laughs> set up pretty much before you can get into the, is that, is that kind of the reasoning? Yeah, or I, I think it's a good assumption. I, I think as well that it's, it's, um, it's really difficult now, I think, to do a, a data or analytics product, yeah. project without AI. Yeah. Uh, but I also think we're now coming to the realization as we move into real world use cases that you can't really do an analytic a, a AI or gen AI project without data and analytics. Yeah. So it's a rising tide for, uh, for all opportunities. You know, we see that Gen AI has stolen budget across the tech stack from many, many places. Where it is not stealing budget, it's from the data and analytics side. <laughs> because, I mean, that, that's foundational. So, yeah, yeah um, good for you. <laughs> exactly, and I think one of the pieces of advice we would give to customers is, is don't look at AI and Gen AI as an island. Uh, yeah. Think about your data infrastructure. Um, you know, how does your data infrastructure support your good old fashioned mode one, pixel perfect printed report? Uh, how does that same data infrastructure support guided analytics, self-service BI, predictive analytics? Uh, and that's, I think, part of the vision that we built is a singular platform that can support all of those use cases, now extending into Gen AI yeah, as I mean, well. It's, it's clear that Gen AI is the application, the data and the infrastructure capabilities drive that piece. Um, back to the sports question, I want to follow up on that. How are you guys instrumenting within Click, or have you guys gotten there yet, or is we still early days of how companies are re-instrumenting their business? Because if you can get that level of productivity down to the athlete level, businesses will probably start thinking about, okay, maybe the work at home is working or not working, or maybe it's a certain kind of personnel makeup. What do we automate? What do we double down on the human loop side? So are you guys starting to see forward progress on instrumenting the business for situational awareness on execution, business execution. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I'm going to look forward this afternoon to a great discussion that's going to be led by one of our customers around the idea of the data customer 360, or the data consumer 360. And it's really all about understanding how users in that organization are using data, the type of decision they're making, the value that they're, they're creating from it. The other side of it is just how we run our, our, our platform, how we run our, our cloud. Um, we obviously don't have access to our customers' data. That's right. their data, we don't, we don't touch that. Um, but we do understand how they use our product where the data resides, where the data comes yeah. from, how it's flowing, who's using it, which capabilities they're using in our product. So that wealth of telemetry that we have uh, is really, really key to how we optimize our processes, how we optimize our platform, but also how we guide the type of innovation that you uh, saw come out today based upon that real world usage. Yeah. James, it's awesome. Giving them a chance to be successful with the data-driven approach, get data culture. Final question to wrap up, next year, Click Connect, what do you think is going to happen? What, if you do your job and the strategy clicks, <laughs> okay? What's going to happen next year? What are we going to be talking about next year? Yeah, so next year I hope to see on stage some real world use cases. We heard some great customers today that have built great data pipelines, that have got great analytics technologies, and they're now starting that integration into AI platforms. Next year, what I want to see is the value that came from that end-to-end -end pipeline, the value that came from Click Talent Cloud, the value that came from uh, Click Answers. And of course, as you heard this morning, that roadmap is not standing still. Uh, we've got an incredible vision for where we want to take that. Uh, so I'm anticipating in the back <laughs> of my mind, I can't tell you now, um, some of the product announcements yeah. that I think we'll be able to make next year. Uh, and that's just going to be equally as exciting as this morning. You like the trajectory you're on right now? You like the trajectory, the business right now? Absolutely, I think I feel really confident in what's happening in the market. I feel really confident with the great engagement yeah. we get from our, our customers here. Um, but we can't rest on our laurels, right? Yeah. Just as we responded to every one of those industry changes over the last 30 years, we've got to anticipate what's going to happen, not just in the next 30 years, but platforms are changing, technology is changing, AI is evolving so rapidly. We've got to stay on our toes. You guys are hitting all the right notes, I got to say, <laughs> I'm impressed. End-to-end -end workloads, data, new intellectual property. 
making that automated with a generator is going to be a nice, nice uh, dream scenario for you guys. Thanks for yep. coming on theCUBE. Thank you. All right, James Fisher, he's the Chief Strategy Officer at Click. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Shelly Crane. We'll be right back with more live coverage here at Click Connect 24 after this short break.